I started by marking off a small section of 3 quarter inch MDF. I cut it off using a straight edge as a guide and my circular saw. I then cut down all of the sections on my table saw, but there's no reason you couldn't do this with a handheld. I then took the sections over to my workbench and began the process of transferring the dimensions from my plans to the side panels. Okay, so one of the things that I get in my um, comments a lot um, or get emailed to me a lot that I want to hopefully resolve um, with this little tip and that is there's some angle or some radius that you did not include in your plan file and therefore I can't make your arcade because your plans suck. And the truth of the matter is you don't need those angles. And now I do include as many of them as I think about including in the plans. Um, most cases, but I just want to show you why you don't need those angles. So for example, this is the top or what will be the top of our arcade and the marquee top is going to be at an angle. Now what we've done is we have measured um, the top of the, the mark, sorry, the top of the arcade and then the bottom of the top of the back of the arcade. And if you put both of those dimensions and draw a straight line, then you'll see there's about, oh, let's say about three quarters of an inch um, here. All you have to do is connect the dot from here to here. You don't need to know the angle. Simply connect the corners of the square with a rule and draw a line. You'll repeat this process everywhere there is an angled section of the arcade. For the curved section, I just freehanded it because getting out the compass would take too long and getting it exact is really unnecessary. I then use some double-sided fabric tape and join the two side panels together. This will allow me to cut them out together, saving time and making sure they are exact matches. I clamped them to my workbench and then used a jigsaw to cut the first one out. I like to use my air compressor to blow the dust away as I am cutting, so I can see the line. For the second arcade, I used my bandsaw to cut it out, and it went much faster. Okay, so I've got one of the um, iPad um, arcades mocked up here and I've um, just got it clamped together. I don't have it um, glued yet. And um, this is an opportunity to point out um, that before you glue and screw or nail or however you decide to put your iPad arcade together, that if you're going to put T-molding in it, you need to route those notches for the T-molding now before you put it together. Um, once you put this thing together, it will be almost impossible to add that slot later without messing other things up. So just take that as a note and we're gonna go ahead and slot ours for T-molding. I used my router table to make all of the slots for the T-molding. Generally, on larger arcades, you would use a handheld router, but since this is so small, the router table made quick work of it. I use glue and brad nails to assemble my iPad arcade. If you don't have a brad nailer, you could just use glue and clamps. You could also just screw it together with wood screws. Brad nails are only there to hold it together while the glue dries. Brad nails alone are not strong enough. If you decide to use brad nails, be sure to hold the gun at a 90 degree angle. Otherwise, you'll wind up with nails protruding from the side panels. Spray on some Super 77 adhesive to the drilling template and give them a few seconds to get tacky. Then apply it to the control panel. I used a Forstner bit to drill out the templates. I have a video on using the templates at thegeekpub.com. You might want to check it out. Before painting MDF, you should always prime it. I really like filler primer because it fills in all of the holes and the imperfections nicely. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint them, and um, I'm gonna paint one of them black and use blue uh, blue tea molding, and then I'm going to paint the other one yellow and use black tea molding. Um, that'll add a little variety, and I'm gonna use a couple of different colors of buttons than I've used before in the past as well. So let's get started. When painting MDF, I generally use three coats of paint, about seven or eight minutes apart from each other. This seems to work really well. I do not sand between coats or do any other prep work except for a light sanding of the filler primer before the first coat of paint. All right, well now I'm going to put the tea molding on and I'm going to use blue tea molding on the black one and I'm going to use uh, black tea molding on the yellow one. And um, now, unfortunately, I have a big roll of blue tea molding, but I cannot find it anywhere. Um, so I don't have enough to finish the black cabinet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to splice in on the back side some black because you're probably never gonna see it. And so that's why when you see that in the video, there'll be a little bit of black on the back side of the blue one. Um, so the other thing I wanna talk about real quickly before we go into this is that Anywhere your tea molding bends over a corner, you need to notch the tea track that's on the bottom, and I'll demonstrate that in the video. It's very important if you want your tea molding to fit flushly against the uh, cabinet at all the turns. I have a separate video on installing tea molding on the geekpub.com that you might also want to check out. Generally, I use a small rubber mallet to persuade the tea molding into the track. I notch it at the corners with a simple pair of dykes. At the ends, just use a very sharp razor knife to cut it off square. <laughs> okay, so the next step is going to be to figure out how we're going to connect our joysticks and our buttons to the iPad and um, there's kind of a number of ways to do this but what I decided I thought would be the best one is to use this um, little Bluetooth module from um, Adafruit and um, basically it's really simple it has you what you do Sorry, I thought I had this over here. So what you do is um, you take a USB cable, um, any USB cable that you find should do fine, and just cut one end off of it. And um, what we'll do is we'll plug this end into a USB charger. This is just an iPad charger, but any charger will work. Um, and then cut the other end off of it. And there'll be four wires, and the ones you're interested in are the black wire and the red wire. And so these will provide power to this little Bluetooth module. And um, on the top row of this Bluetooth module is a section for plugging in keys on a keyboard. And this is really fantastic because what we're going to do is not plug keys into it. We're going to plug the wires of, and we'll have to cut off these connectors, but we're gonna plug our wires from our buttons and our joysticks into these uh, modules across the top. That will allow us to control the uh, iPad and play video games using these buttons over Bluetooth. To cover up all of the unused bare wires, I slid some heat shrink tubing over it. I highly recommend using a heat gun to contract the heat shrink. Some people like to use a lighter, but it can cause damage to your wiring and the heat shrink itself. Once that was done, I connected the bare ends to my multimeter, plugged it into a USB charger, and checked to make sure that we get 5 volts. At this point, I installed the joystick and the buttons on the control panel. This just takes 4 screws and a couple of plastic nuts. The joystick comes with a plastic donut that covers the hole. Don't forget to install it before screwing in the ball onto the top of it. I drilled a hole into the back of the cabinets to accept the USB cable. Push the cable through the hole and then tie a knot in the cable. This will keep the cable from pulling out later and damaging our electronics. One of my favorite tools for electronics is this little pair of helping hands. I use them to hold the Adafruit in place while I soldered on the power wires. 
You'll know you did it right if you can see the Adafruit showing up on your device's Bluetooth configuration screen. The Sanwa joysticks are not labeled, so I used the continuity mode of my multimeter to determine which wires were up, down, left, and right. I soldered the grounds from the joystick and the two buttons together, and then once again used a section of heat shrink tubing to cover them up. I then soldered the joystick and all of the buttons to the Adafruit's keyboard contacts. <laughs> well, I'm holding my head in shame. Um, we're going to have to stop this project here and move on. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and call this project a complete fail. And um, I really was struggling with whether or not to show this video and even put it on YouTube. Um, but I felt like, you know, it's my first big fail project and um, I just thought I'd share it with you anyway. So here's the problem. The, um, the Adafruit keyboard controller works great as a keyboard controller. Um, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. However, iOS is very limited in what it can support via a keyboard. And so a lot of these games, or in fact all of these games that work on the iPad under iOS, they actually send a key press on key down and a key press on key up. And this is how they get past some of the iPad limitations for what it supports via keyboard. Now, this would work fine on an Android device or even a Windows device. Unfortunately, I don't have an Android device and my Windows device is far too large to fit in this um, arcade cabinet. So I'll probably pick this up again in the future with a different device when I can get around to finding one and we'll finish it with an, with an Android device. There's also the option of putting an Arduino in here and making the Arduino send the key presses. Um, it's kind of as a middleman, and um, I just I don't have time to go through and write all the script right now. I've been working on this project for three weekends. It was only supposed to take one weekend. I just can't take any more time. So with that, you have seen my first fail video, and um, hopefully we'll pick it back up and finish it at some point. Thanks for watching.